Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming good and clear from your side. Uh, today, our topic is no different from other topics, which is about Islam as usual. But, you know, the, the funny thing I find always about Muslims, that when they speak about their religion, they try to present themselves as people who have a religion, and this religion teach value, and teach dignity, and teach honesty, and teach etc. So today we are going to see together if this is true or not. Now, regardless if you are someone never heard of what we do here, or you are a person who knows a lot about Islam, I want you just to judge by honesty, not by my speech or by their article. One uh, posted in YouTube, uh, this link, about uh, 12 principles that make you or make a true Muslim. So supposedly those principles, if you follow them, you are or you will be a true Muslim. And I wonder really how we can uh, claim to be people of belief who have a principle when we lie about, about our principle. So let us see if those principles are true or they are fabricated. You know, in the front of you, you will see the whole article. Actually, I have it in the info. Feel free to click at the link which is there to read the whole article if you wish. And we don't cut and we don't cut we paste we don't do what the muslims do we don't fabricate the first principle in islam to make you a true muslim is to worship allah alone this is the biggest lie muslims they keep spreading all over that there are people who worship allah alone the fact muslim don't even worship allah they worship a guy his name is muhammad if you go and see every practice in islam is you will see immediately that the most important person in the religion of Islam or the cult of Islam is the guy who his name is Muhammad, it's not Allah. As an example, if you say the F word to Allah, you will not be killed. They will give you three days to repent. If you say the F word to Muhammad, you are dead guaranteed, even if you repent. So how you worship Allah, but if I curse Allah, I will not be killed. But if I curse Muhammad, I will be dead. How you say you worship Allah alone, when you put the name of Muhammad beside the name of Allah, when somebody convert to Islam, can I convert to Islam by saying I believe in Allah alone? No. Why? Allah, he sent, according to Muslims, all the prophets you heard of them. And the Muslims consider Jesus as a prophet too. So why in the Shahada don't say, okay, I believe in Muhammad, I believe in Allah, and all his prophets. Do I need to call the... Um, why I don't mention Jesus as an Why Musa? What about what about uh, Solomon? What about David? What about Abraham? The Muslim they claim that they believe in those prophets, but the Shahada in Islam only contain two names, which the name of Allah and the name of Muhammad, which is a true God of Islam. Same time, if you ask the Muslims what Muhammad name mean, they say the praised one. Is that really his name? Absolutely not. This is a title Muhammad he gave to himself. What the praised one mean? You know, what does that mean? Praised one is the God. Who is the praised one? So how you say to me that you worship Allah alone, but you're a prophet, you call him the praised one. If Muhammad is the praised one, who is the praised two? Where is the oneness of God? This is a biggest lie. Muslims, they keep spreading around saying that we believe in Allah alone. We worship Allah alone. We are people who follow Allah alone, and etc. And supposedly that will make the Muslims in a better position when they speak to Christians because the Christians supposedly they believe in the Trinity and you know Trinity come on you believe three they are one I mean this is complicated doesn't make sense blah 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 but the, the fact it is the Muslims who have multi gods and the number one God for them is a man his name is Muhammad now I'm not going to go to details about the, the, the nature of Allah because according to the Hadith according to the Quran Allah is just a man who is a physical being who have a leg, he have a shin, he have a lips, he have eyes, he have face, he have ass, he have uh, hands, uh, he have two hands in the right side, which is very funny. This is not our topic, but stating that uh, to be a true Muslim is to worship Allah alone, that is a big fat lie. You Muslim don't even worship Allah, you worship Muhammad. Now, if we ask the Muslims about the practice of Islam, as an example, is the practice of Islam is based on Muhammad or based on Allah? The answer is very simple. It's based on Muhammad. There's 
if I if I say hundreds and thousands of rules is not exist in the Quran, but it is coming from Muhammad only, you will you will you will see who is Allah and who is Muhammad. What is the location of Allah in this religion? How many rules in Islam is coming from the man his name is Muhammad? And how many rules is coming in Islam from the man his name is Allah? And then we will find that the man his name is Allah is just a fiction, the fact that Islam is coming from Muhammad. You know, not to mention that even, or to forget to mention that even the rules which is supposedly coming from Allah, there's no witness for it. Even Muhammad himself, he did not see Allah, he never spoke to Allah. Which means at the end of the day, both rules which is supposedly coming from Allah and the one coming from Muhammad, both of them coming from Muhammad anyway. But if we speak now about rules created by Muhammad, as an example, from the first thing the Muslims do in the morning to the last thing they do at the night, you will not find any single proof for it in the Quran. All of it is from Muhammad. If the Muslims, they say to us that the Quran is the source of Islam and Quran is the book of God, shouldn't the book of God contain the word of God and the word of God should contain what is needed for us to know about God? Okay. Where in the Quran I can learn about Allah? If I go right now and I type the word Allah in the Quran, what I find? I find the most stupid statement ever. Chapter 1, verse number 1, it says, In the name of Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Bismillah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. How, how in the world someone supposed he is God is talking, he's saying in the name of Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. If he is saying in the name of Allah, so who is the one is talking? Have you ever heard of a stupid statement like this? In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. This is a translation for sure. It doesn't say gracious, it does not say merciful. Those are three names. Allah is a well known name for the God of the Arab. Ar Rahman is a name Muhammad he stole from the guy, the Muslim, they call him Musaylam al Kadhab. He is really the true Muslim, or let us say the word Muslim even is stolen from his name. And the word of Rahman is a story from his name. If we go in the if we go and search in the Quran and we search for the word of Rahman, we will find that the first time Muhammad he mentioned the word of Rahman, it was almost in the middle of the Quran. Let us see. We search. Just to show you how miserable this religion and how stupid this religion. <clears throat> uh, let us see. There's many verses speaking about the names of Allah, which is the best names Allah he chose for himself. Let us go here first, and this website is better. <clears throat> this is the most funny, stupid book ever you can imagine. I'm not insulting, I'm just showing you how you can expose this cult is. قُلْ إِدُعُ اللَّهَ أَوْ أَدُعُ الرَّحْمَانِ أَيَّمَا أَتَدْعُوا فَلَهُ الْأَسْمَى الْحُسْنَى What is this? This is a chapter 17, verse number 110. But this is a chapter 17 in the Quran today. The Muslims they agree that the Quran today is not as an order of revelation. As an order of revelation, it's almost 50 or 51, depend in the, in the recitation of the Quran. So here, we have uh, this chapter saying, let us read the translation. <clears throat> uh, you see here, did not. Uh, I, I want to find somebody who, who, who gave the names, keep the names as it is. Here they are giving stupid translation. All right. Here they are not giving the name. You see, they are calling him a gracious. I want somebody saying a Rahman. All right. And then now we fail to find a Rahman because of the stupid translation they provide to us. 
Here they call him the beneficent. Oh, stupid. They are replacing the word Ar Rahman. The fact here, the word is Ar Rahman, should appear in the translation. Here we go. Say, call upon Allah or call upon Ar Rahman by whatever name you call upon Him. For for Him belong all belong all the beautiful names. Okay, what this story is about? This story is very simple. Muhammad never called his God Ar Rahman. Never. Until the middle of his uh, what he called prophethood, which means more than ten years already pass. Suddenly, Muhammad he says, "In the name of Ar Rahman." The Arab around Muhammad they say to him, "Allah, we know who is He. Who is Ar Rahman? The only Rahman we know is Rahman Uri Imama, which is." The guy who there's a guy who claimed that he's a prophet and he, he his God his name is a Rahman and he called himself Rahman. Muhammad he said to them now he he knew that he got busted. He is stealing the name of the God of that guy. He said I call him Ar or I call him a Rahman it doesn't matter. <laughs> but here this is will raise many questions. As long as Rahman the word Rahman appear. For reality, first time in the Quran in this verse. As you see, before this time, Muhammad never called a Rahman. Why? Because obviously nobody knows what has Rahman. They never heard this before. If you go to the book of Tafsir, if we go to the book of Tafsir, <clears throat> and we go to verse 17, and remember, this is not that the Quran here is not in the order of revelation, supposedly. It is in the order of what is printed according to Uthman, as they claim it is from Uthman. But I believe none of this have to do with Uthman. All right. <coughs> Here you will see the. Uh, uh, the interpretation for the verse, all right? If you read the interpretation, there is a book, it's called Asbab al Nuzul. Asbab al Nuzul simply, uh, the word Asbab means reasons, and Nuzul uh, to send down. So this book speak about, this is an Islamic scholar book, not our book. This is why it's listed in the Islamic government website of Jordan. This website we are reviewing right now is owned by the King of Jordan. When Muhammad, he called, read with me carefully, uh, he keeps saying in his present uh, perspiration, O oh, beneficent, O oh, merciful. Okay. And so the idolaters, they, uh, they said to him, Muhammad used to call into Allah, and now he is calling into two new gods. <laughs> Do you see it? So this is clear that Muhammad never used the road Ar Rahman and Ar Rahim. Never, never, never. How Muhammad suddenly start adding those Ar Rahman Ar Rahim? Look what happened. So he says they thought he is worshiping two two new gods additional to the god he worship allah and the beneficent which is which, which is rahman we do not know anyone by the name of Ar rahman except Ar rahman of al yamama do you see it? this is not my this is not my words as you see i'm reading the muslim scholars books so they said to him what rahman you are talking about as we know you never mentioned Ar rahman before the god his name is allah Suddenly now you are saying Ar-Rahman. Who is Ar-Rahman? The only Rahman we know is Rahman al-Yamama. Rahman al-Yamama is the guy who his name is, the Muslim, they call him Musaylima. The fact he is Muslim. So they, they mean in Musaylima the liar, they call him the Muslim to insult him, they call him the liar. Why? Because at that time there was many claiming to be prophet, including Muhammad. It was a business. Muhammad's business was successful. And actually, almost this man, Musaylima, destroyed Muhammad. However, at the end of the day, this guy, he was killed by the Muslims. Uh, uh, according to some stories, he'd been forced to convert to Islam, but then he made, became reveal, a rebellion, and he was killed anyway. This guy is the one who, who have the name Ar-Rahman. And here, the Arab and all the Muslim witness, then the only one they knew he claimed to be Ar-Rahman is this person. And his God is Rahman. So they said to him, are you worshiping two gods now? But the important about this is 
that if he, this is the first time Muhammad he mentioned the word of Rahman, that's when Muhammad he never mentioned it in the chapter one in the Quran, or in chapter two, or in chapter three, or in chapter four, or chapter etc. I mean, according to Revelation, if we if we search Ar Rahman, the word Ar Rahman in the Quran. Oh, you see, even the word Ar Rahman, by the way, is written wrongly in the Quran, but we will let it go. If you search a word Ar Rahman. Verse number one, okay. What else? Chapter number one, chapter uh, verse number one. I mean, every almost chapter in the Quran, it have a Rahman, a Rahman, a Rahman, a Rahman. All of it. Now, as long as this is the first time Muhammad he received a Rahman, what we will do with the Rahman before? All the verses which a Rahman mentioned. Obviously, those are added. Those are added to the Quran later. All those verses we are showing you, it's showing the word Rahman. But yet, according to the Muslims' resource, this is the first time the word Rahman ever mentioned in the mouth of Muhammad. Which means all the Rahman verses in the Quran, which is mentioned before this revelation if it is revelation is a fabrication does that mean the quran is a fabricated book all of it number two the story here proved to us that muhammad is a thief he liked the name of the god this guy he's calling he stole from him his name musaylam you see this guy here they call him musaylama but the fact his name is a muslim He took the first name, that he's a Muslim. They took the second name, which is a Rahman. And now he is the first Muslim and he is his God is a Rahman. So now I call, uh, I, I cry into Allah or I call to a Rahman. It doesn't matter. For Allah, all the good names. What Allah good names? What does that mean? All the good names belong to Allah. So Allah don't have names. Well, what, so what the name of Allah? That's mean they are not names. And why Muhammad never mentioned Rahman before? So when the Muslim they call they speak about the principle of worshiping one God, that's a fabrication because even that God they speak of, they don't even know who is he. If we ask a Muslim who is Allah, he don't know. He will tell you he is the creator. But the Quran report that there's many creators. Which one? The Quran itself says that there is many creators. Which one I should should worship? From the Quran. Not from different book, I find that there's many creators. Which one I want to, I'm going to worship right now? Allahu Khaliqin. Blessed be Allah, the best of the, the best of the creators. Okay. First of all, you see, if you if you discuss every word in the, uh, every sentence of the Quran, you will see how stupid it is. Chapter twenty three, verse number fourteen. Yusuf Ali translation, Muslim translation, not mine. Okay. Here it says, read with me. The Muslim when they translate, they lie to you. They say the best to create. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. It says the best of the creators. Change the translator, and you will see the translation change. It's a miracle. Why Muslims don't say the truth? Here we go. It says, and then it produced it as another creation so blessed be Allah the best of the creators here there's many questions about this verse not only about the creators how stupid to say that he is the best of the creators because if there's no other creators and you say you are the best of the creators it's mean you are a scam you are lying to us to be the best of the creators when there's no other creators to compare to you ask a Muslim who is Allah? He said the creator. But the Quran says he is the best of the creators. So there's many creators. Same time, how Allah, he said, blessed be to Allah, the best of the creators. I mean, this is the most stupid thing. Obviously, this is a man writing about Allah. This is not Allah talking. And here, you will find how many stupid mistakes in this verse. How God can speak such a thing? That Allah He created you from a drop of a sperm, hmm? which is like a clot. What clot? Congeal the blood, the clot. Congeal the blood. 
dead blood are we created really from dead blood who is the stupid in the world will say that according to the Quran we are created from a dead blood which is going to grow and then the clot is going to be a lump not photos there's no photos what's a lie it's going to be a lump it's going to be a piece of a flesh and then and each one of those and then the lump will became a bones and then we close the bones with the flesh if you go in the hadith you will find that Muhammad he claim that every stage is 40 days let us see Let us read to find you the hadith to show you that this is uh, all these fictions about Allah is God and you know there's no way a God will speak such a stupid thing. Read with me. The creation of any one of you is like that is a semen is collected in the womb of the mother for 40 days. Have you ever heard of a stupid statement like this? That semen is collected in the womb for 40 days. Semen does not live more than maximum, maximum 36 hours. You can search in Google right now and see what is the maximum. Like maybe in some cases, maybe uh, four days, five days. But that will not be normal. But to say that you are collected in your mother womb, actually it doesn't say even womb, it says button, the belly. So you are collected as a semen in the belly of your mother for 40 days. 40 days. And then you are going to be a, a, a congealed blood, dead blood for other 40 days. And then you are going to be a piece of a flesh for 40 days. So the total is 120 days. If Muhammad is claiming that this is coming from God, what kind of God he says such a thing? So when, when a Muslim he's tried to say to me that we believe in God, we need to know what God is talking about. The God is Muhammad because Muhammad is the one who come with all those things. You see, where Muhammad he got with this explanation that you are collected for 40 days in the in the belly of your mother? Any Muslim can tell me. They will tell you, Jibreel told him, who's Jibreel? The angel. Hmm? The angel told him, okay, my friend. What kind of angel he said to Muhammad such a thing? Read carefully with me, please. And as you see, this is the Muslim translation, so don't blame me for the stupidity of your prophet. The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you see this one between two brackets, this is sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which means Allah praying him, salute him, because he's God, not Allah. Allah is the one who pray on Muhammad. I thought Muhammad, he will pray to Allah. No, Allah and the angels, they pray on Muhammad. And then they say the truthful, the receiver. So here he, you see, Muhammad is telling the truth here. This guy is not a scam. This is the truth. The truth we are collected in the in our mother Billy for forty days. This is alone enough to prove to you that Muhammad is a big fat liar. And this is alone to prove to us that Muhammad he did not speak to an angel. If you are an atheist, if you are a Christian, if you are a Jew, if you are a Hindu, whatever you are, you believe in angels or not. If this man claimed that he received his information from a superior being, divine being, whatever you want to call him being, hmm? what kind of God does God he say such a thing to him? And this is exactly what is in the Quran. And now Muhammad, when he says such a thing, do the Muslims believe in it? Yes. Absolutely. And then you became a dead blood for the same period. We are going to be blood for 40 days. Which donkey, which doctor in the world, he is a donkey, he will say and accept such a thing. The Muslims, they have a videos about uh, Dr. Mori, Mori, I forgot his name. He's from Canada. 
they invited him to the conference in Saudi Arabia many many years ago and they gave him false translation for the Quran and the guy he said this is fit with the science what the Muslims do they fool people about what is written in their book they told him that it says there that it is like uh, uh, what is the the insect name I forgot uh, in English it's like an insect stuck in your in your body to suck your blood but but the, the Arabic says alaqa, this alaqa is you see when you have a cut in your skin there is a piece of a blood which is going to dry over your skin cut to block it from bleeding and the same time it's helped the processing of healing that is what alaqa is they gave the guy a wrong translation saying it's the same as an insect in the look or let us say it's a creature which is like a, you know a suck your blood which is stuck with your body and will cling in your body but it doesn't say that you see here it says became a clinging like similar period it doesn't say that it says this is a false translation clot you see the same the same like Yusuf Ali look what Yusuf Ali did he said congeal the blood do you see it so it's a clot of a blood and it's a congealed blood who how muhammad he came with this conclusion muhammad he noticed that when women and his wives uh, obviously they cannot get a breath net uh, they when they lose babies there is certain kind of a blood come when they cannot deliver the baby when the baby they not die so muhammad because if he's an idiot he thought this is what is making the baby it is that blood so we are for a certain time as this position and then after that we change to be a became a piece of a flesh and then after that Allah will cover us cover our bones by flesh you said in the beginning flesh and now cover the bones by flesh and all of this is 40 days 40 days 40 days so when the Muslims speak about worshiping I don't want to speak longer about this Worshipping one God, this is a big fat lie. Muslims have one God. His name is Muhammad, and it's not Allah. Allah is a side God to sponsor Muhammad is just for the position. Muhammad he used the name of Allah in order to reach to the job. It's like Erdogan. Erdogan he reached, he used Golan. Golan is the true master of Erdogan. He is the one who made the government of Erdogan exist. He is the one who made him win. And when Erdogan he won, he kicked out Ardu a, a, a Golan, and now a Golan is in America as a refugee. Allah right now is a refugee, and he's homeless. His name is used, and Muhammad took over. Now we continue. The second principle in Islam, I don't know where the Muslims are coming with those principles. To be respectful, kind to the parents. Well, Muhammad was not respectful to his parents. He said that my father and your father in hellfire. Muhammad, what Muhammad he said about his family? <coughs> Let us see. What Muhammad he said about his parents specifically? He said, "Ya ayuha ladina amanu, inna al mushrikun al najis." Oh, who you believe you should know that the mushrikun are najis what najis mean not just not as muslims they they, they, uh, they translate to you any clean uh not a clean this is garbage najis does not mean that najis mean that he is filthy it doesn't matter how he clean himself you can read all the translation exist in muslim books Oh, who you believers, the idolaters are any clean. Doesn't say that. It says filthy. Not this is not about filthy only about body. They are filthy in uh, in and out. To the point they are not allowed to get close to the Muslims' holy places. All right now, if you go and search in Google, you will find that in Mecca and in Medina there's roads. Before you enter the cities, it says for Muslims and non-Muslims. And the funny, the Muslims speak about racism. And speak about where is fair where is justice how you treat people equally and not to treat them equally they speak about the south africa government the white african government when they were discriminating the black having black buses and white buses well this is exist right now as we speak in saudi arabia 
there's cities where non-muslims are not allowed to enter and if you enter they will chop your head as if you are a cat in the highway they have a signs where it says non-muslims only muslims only you can search it as we speak in google and you will see i'm telling the truth and this is exposed what the Muslims claim that Islam came to make people equal. If we are equal, why we are unclean? And why we cannot go in certain roads? And why we cannot go in certain cities? And why we will be killed if we go there? Because simply you are unclean. Why am I clean? Because you are the Muslim. So where is the equality? I don't want to speak more about the equality because that will take us to endless issues. Islam, all of it, don't believe in equality. As an example, the punishment of killing non-Muslim is not equal to killing Muslim. Muhammad, he said, there's no Muslim will be killed for killing non-Muslim, but the punishment for killing a Muslim is death. Which means, if a Muslim kill a Christian, he will not be killed. According to Islamic law. I'm talking about a murder, not killing by accident. No, he will not be killed. But if a Muslim murder a Muslim, he will be killed. Right now, as we speak, the punishment of a murder in Iran for non-Muslim is what equal to $500, which is a price of the, a half cow, not even a cow, a goat. But if an Iranian citizen, he's a Muslim, he kill a Muslim, the punishment is death. This is the truth. So Muhammad, he's, he, he announced that his parents are najis and they are unclean and they are dirty. Where is the respect? Even the Quran, speaking about respecting the parents, isn't it Abu Lahab is the uncle of Muhammad? Quran have a scandal about them, calling them names. Where is the respect? Chapter 111, verse number 1, 2, 3. It's a, it's, a, it's a small, very tiny chapter. All this chapter is just calling names. For whom? The uncle of Muhammad. Now, some Muslims, they say, uh, you know, uh, Abu Lahab is a very ugly, disgusting man. But, but Muhammad, he married two of his daughters to this man, children. So why he was not disgusting before? They are very close to the point Two of the daughters of Muhammad, according to Muslims, married the children of this man. If he is disgusting, there is no way Muhammad will marry his daughters to his children. What happened when this man refused Muhammad to be a prophet? Muhammad, he launched his mouth on him. And he made the Quran claiming that this is God talking, but there is no way God will say this. Imagine God the Almighty. The call you call him Allah, you call him whatever you want. He make a chapter saying, Tabbat yaba dada abu lahab wa tab. What the heck is that? What the, and by the way, the translation is the most funny translation. It doesn't say the power of Abu Lahab will perish. It doesn't say that. I mean, the trans the, the Muslim are you using Google translation, Muslims? But in the time of Yusuf Ali, there was no Google translation. Change the translation. I don't know which which one I click in. Let us see the other one. Predation overtake both hands of Abu Lahab. Look, look how here it's both both hand of Abu Lahab and the other one it was the power of Abu Lahab. <laughs> we just changed the translator and suddenly the word hands appear and the word hands disappear in the other translation. But if you read the whole chapter, which is nothing except Noim calling, very funny and very stupid, God Almighty is like a, two women who they are living in a building in Egypt, and one of them, she split some water in the stairs, and the one downstairs saying to her, hey, stupid idiot, what are you doing? You are, may Allah, you know, make your hand dirty. And the other woman, she said to her, oh, you may Allah make your health go, and your TV will not work no more. And then the other one, she said to her, soon, okay, soon you will be burned in flame. Just wait, the punishment is coming. And then his wife is the one who carried the wood. Okay, your wife, she carried wood. What the heck is that? This is God talking? I mean, who is the crazy here? God, he speak like this? This is... With my respect to ladies, but this is a fight between two ladies about washing the stairs. 
one of them she is calling the other one names this is gonna be God this is this is this is madness the God Almighty making a chapter about the uncle of Muhammad and his wife and what he is saying about them may Allah beat your hand and make you perish your wealth will not help you he's jealous that he's, he's wealthy Muhammad is poor this is why he married his daughters to his children so he can eat good food he can go to their houses for free if this guy is ugly and bad and disgusting and he's a scam why you marry your daughters to him then he shall soon soon burn in fire in flame and then and his wife she is the one who carry the wood what carry wood if my wife she carry wood at that time what the problem is that an insult and then we say in her in her neck there is a there is a necklace made from wood like what 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 does that mean What the heck is that? And that's it. He stopped. The story is over now. What happened next? <laughs> what we learn from this story? Nothing. What the point of this chapter? Nothing. Nothing. It is a pure stupidity. And by the way, the Muslims, everyone give you a different story about this guy. Even some of them, they say, he is not the uncle of Muhammad. Some of them, he says, hey, no, his daughter was not married. Because the Muslims are the most confused people ever in the world. They have thousands and thousands, if not millions of stories. And all these stories don't match. But we go by what they believe at the end. Now we go back to the article. Muhammad, he insulted his parents. He said, my father and your father... Abi wa abaka finnar. Let me show you this hadith. Here we go. Where is the respect for the parents? He replied, Your father in hell. And then when he turned back, he said, My father and your father in hell. Why? Because he's a kafir. And his mother too. Where is the respect? And we showed you Muhammad calling names to his uncle. And as you know, uncle is in the place of your parents. When somebody curse and call names to uncle, that is not a nice person. And this is not a person who respects his parents because your uncle is equal to your parents. Let us continue. To be good to relatives. I mean, how, how much hypocrisy we have here. We we'll just give you an example of Muhammad not being good to his relatives. Starting from his uncle and the wife of the uncle. All of Quraysh, he start attacking them, stealing their money, stealing their food. Each time a caravan, and the Quraysh is his relative. Remember, this is a tribe family. Each time a tribe, the tribe have a caravan to do trade or to bring trade in, Muhammad, he attack it because he's a thief. The Muslim, they say to you, oh, he was attacking you, attacking them, to retrieve what he lost that is a big fat lie nobody kick him out actually there's tons of tv stations made by muslim scholars explaining that all of this that muhammad he lost his money there is a lie muhammad he left willingly he took all what belonged to him all his baloney and he left alone and nobody forced him the reason he left because he'd been humiliated how humiliated did they did they uh uh, really killed him? No, he left alive and nobody killed him. And he did not leave in the middle of the night. The Muslim they claim, oh, and one night he asked his cousin, he was nine years old, to sleep in his bed and he ran for his life. You see, even that story proven to us that, that Muhammad is a scam. Imagine I ask a child, he's nine years old, to sleep in my bed so my enemies will enter my room and put their sword in him, thinking that this is me, and cover his face. What kind of a coward I am to do so? Even that story is a proof that Muhammad is a scam, if it's true. 
we continue be good to your parents huh you're right uh and uh and to the poor to the poor be good to the poor i like that you see when muhammad he a man he was a blind he came to him the chapter of abasa even the chapter name is abasa what abasa what this chapter is about this is a chapter about a guy he is a blind and he is poor chapter 74 verse number 22 he came to muhammad muhammad he kicked him out for he is busy speaking to the rich one rich people you know why i'm going to speak to a poor person let us go hold on why i want to go speak to our uh, like speak to a poor person when i can speak to the rich ones who have money they have dollars so what i do i insult the 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 the, the bad one uh, I, if i go you know let me go first hold on um uh, before i go to abasa uh, 74 let me show you this one about the poor one Being good to the poor man, what one? Let us see how Muhammad was poor, uh, good to the poor man, poor one. Who is more poor than someone is an orphan? I mean, especially in in the old days. You know there's no organization to help them you know uh, there is no nobody to help what Muhammad he did with the orphan let us see let's see In order, in order to 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 be nice to the orphan, we have to sleep with them. وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَنْ لَا تُقْصِتُوا فِي الْيَتَامَى فَانْكَحُوا مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ مَثْنَى وَثَلَاثَ وَرَبَاعَ This is how we can be nice to the orphan. Read with me carefully. Chapter 4, verse number 3. If you she if you fear that you shall not be able to deal justly with the orphan, then go and if not doesn't say Mary, if of the women of your choice two and the three and four. Okay, what is the connection of being justly to the orphan, of when having sex with four women? Anybody can tell me. What is the relationship? Imagine God forbid Jesus is speaking about orphans, and then says. If you cannot be fair with the orphan, go and if two and three and four women of your choice. I want anyone to explain to me how this happened. What is the connection? Any Muslim can tell me? What is the connection? How we can connect this to this? What orphan have to do with sex? Simply what Muslims they do they take orphan children and they force them into sex and this is supposedly is a charity in other way they marry children who they are orphan so a muslim he will not give money to a child unless the child especially so she have to be a girl she take off her panty that is how we can be merciful and justly with the orphan and this is being good to the poor is that how we can be good there's a story of a woman where she was dying in the desert and then a bedouin man muslim man he was going through in the desert with his camel the woman she begged him for money for sorry for food or and water she's dying the man he said i will give you if you let me rape you the woman she said this is not fair i just don't want to eat i'm dying you know just be a man you know he said well, deal is deal you want 
give me what I want take what you want she have no choice she let him rape her because this is rape is against her will then she went to Umar al-Khattab the Caliphate and she complained that this guy he raped her Muhammad uh, Umar al-Khattab he said this is marriage this is marriage let me see if I can find the hadith maybe I can find it you never know <coughs> Let us see. I'm trying to find it. Maybe. To see if we put two bracket between those things, maybe we can find it. The problem when you even you type in Arabic, it's different. Let us see here. Maher. Maher. All right now. Uh, thinking. Anyway, you, you can search the story and maybe uh, Phil he can uh, can uh, give you a link if you have it there. He can maybe later post it for you and uh, and it. Um, in the text down there so if you notice with me everything the Muslim they spoke about in their article is nothing but a scam be careful with money not waste resource okay be careful with money don't waste resource if you go and read the history of Islam you will find that Muhammad as an example he have 13 wives is that a waste of money or not is that a waste of money or not this is money how Muhammad and why Muhammad need to have 13 wives what for this is according to Muslims 13 wives how many slaves Muhammad he owned what for fantasy to be a slave lord how many slave Billy dancer every caliphate in Islam he have at home Omar al-Khattab he did beat a woman who is a slave in his house for covering herself and short for covering her breast so not only they you know they like wasting money for them a human being is money for them they abuse a human they kidnap a human they rape women and even then they force them not to wear proper clothes when they have visitors when the slave was coming inside the house of Omar to serve his guest food and drink Omar, he asked her, why you are covering yourself? Are you trying to resemble the free women, the Muslim women? Because Muslim women is the one who allowed to cover themselves. Slave women, she have to show her body and her hair. And Omar, he did beat her as a penalty for that. Where is justice and where is don't waste resource? Isn't it waste of resource to enslave a human being and make him your slave? Isn't it waste of resource to travel from China to go to Saudi Arabia to go around the black stone and to kiss it and to lick it? Isn't it a waste of resource that you are in the month of Ramadan, which is one month of a 12 in the year, is a waste of time? There's no job can be done. In the month of Ramadan, all Islamic countries, they go sleep. Where is the waste or don't waste resource? What about Muhammad burning trees? Is that a waste of resource on money? Oh, because he, those are the trees of the Jews. We can burn them. But the trees is, is for all mankind. Trees produce oxygen. Trees, uh, trees uh, 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 bring rain. Why you why you want to burn them? Or is an evil man? That is a behavior of an evil man. He have a lot of hate. It's easy for nobles of Quraysh, etc., etc., etc. And then he cut the, the he, he cut the, the the trees, and the sparks were flying in all direction. And even Muhammad he made a Quran about it. The Muslim they say to you, the Prophet was a go green guy. He forbid us from cutting a, a, a tree. The fact this is not true. 
the Quran make a verse about burning trees is lawful burning trees and cutting trees is a must actually not only lawful ما قطعتم من لينا أو تركتموها قائمة على أصولها فبإذن الله. What does that mean? Any tree you cut, you Muslims, it's because I want you to cut it. And this is what Muhammad did. And why you do it? Because this is the land of the enemies. We burn them all. We burn their trees, we burn everything in our way. We are the civil people. We are Muhammad is the most amazing civil man. Why you are you are seeking revenge from the trees? Yes. And then we take all the money they have as a spoil, as you see. And who is the one who will take the spoil? Muhammad. And then they want to give us Islam, present, present Islam as something high, something noble, something exciting something uh, full of charity and mercy but even trees did not survive the vengeance and the madness and the the, the the hate of muhammad then we find number four principle to take care of the children i mean this is the most funny thing a muslim can say to me how you Muslims allowed having sex with the children and you claim that you take care of children? Anyone can explain to me? How you Muslims allowed beating children, raping children, kidnapping children, buying children, selling children? Even in the heaven of Allah, children are sex slaves. And yet you claim that you care of the children. When Muhammad he did marry a child at the age of six, <clears throat> Was he taking care of the children? And we just showed you the verse in the Quran speaking about raping the orphan. What about chapter 65, verse number 4? This is a chapter of the divorce. What this chapter is about is speaking about divorce divorcing children who they never have their period yet. Really, if you have any doubt about their waiting period, this is speak to, to explain to you. This is speaking about women who they are divorced. According to Islam, they have to wait for three months. To be sure they aren't breaking it and this is showing us the ignorance of the god of islam because you do not need to wait three months to know if the woman is written or not then we continue so this is about if you have a doubt about the waiting period the pres pres prescribed waiting period shall be three months also for those who have not yet menstruated because of their young age why what we are talking about divorcing them now so the Muslim, they lie to you, they say, we don't marry children. So you divorce children, but you don't marry them? This is talking about divorcing children who never have their menstruation yet. So where is the one who take care of children? Guys, is my voice clear? Uh, let me know, please, if the voice is not coming clear to you. All right? So if we go all over the principle, the Muslims, they claim, you will find that each one of them is a lie. To respect every and not to kill anyone unless pursued for justice. What a big fat lie. What a big fat lie. Let us see if this is true or not. If we go to chapter 9, verse number 29. Chapter 9, verse number 29. Where is the justice? And you know what? I'm not going to explain to you the verse. I'm going to show you what the Muslims believe. And you tell me if this is justice or not. Why the Muslims have to kill all the Christians and the Jews? What is the purpose? Justice? Let us see. This is a chapter 9. All right. And here we go. And as you see, you know, um, I, I don't want people to say he's misquoting. I'm showing you the Muslims' understanding for it, not my understanding. Let me make it bigger, the text bigger. 
So you can see it better. All right. As you see, the mushrikeen are najis. The mushrikeen are filthy, are impure. So what we will do with them? They and the people of the, uh, of Dima, which means the Christian and the Jews, are filthy. They are trash. They are garbage. And they give us a speeches about how the white man treated the black man. You are the one who treat people not equally. You are the one who call people clean and unclean by your own sanctions. You are the one who uh, uh, discriminate by religion. Okay. The believer does not become impure. So a Muslim, just because he's a Muslim, he's always impure. And you, because you are not a Muslim, you are a, you are impure. As simple as that. And supposedly we Islam, they, they give us a speech about Islam as being an teach equality. Islam teach dignity. Where is the dignity in that? And guys, please, I don't see a, 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 like a, a, how many people are watching right now. I'm not sure how many. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to find out. 137. I mean, why only 137 people? They watch a women doing makeup. They will find 2,000 people watching, and we make a very important education for free. We have 137, 140. I mean, this is not even fair. It's not even. I'm not talking about fair to me. I'm saying not fair to the topic. Honestly, I, uh, my my Lord, my Savior, the Messiah, have a 12. So I'm not complaining about the number in here. I'm talking about why we don't invite people here. Share the link, please. Tell your friends. Subscribe. Make it appear in the front place. Let us do some work. I am in trouble. I'm traveling around, but yet this is the most important thing I do. To show everybody that what they say to you about this cult is absolutely false. And as you see, we don't say things, we don't make speeches as the Muslims they say. A Muslim, he will quote for you a verse from the Bible, he will give it a meaning does not exist. We don't do that. I'm not even giving you my opinion. I'm here, I'm showing you what they believe. This is their interpretation. This is their website. This is their scholar. It's published as we speak today. In the moment, we see all together the same page. We don't do what the Muslims do. A Muslim, he will quote for you, Jesus saying, the one who drink my water, he will never go thirsty or he will never die. They will say here, Jesus is saying, saying, drink my piss. Absolutely, this is false and stupid. But this is what they do. We don't do that. We don't do what the Muslims do. We don't, be, we don't belong to the devil who need to play games and spread lies. We show things as it is. No sugar coating, no fabrication, no politically correct, as it is. And being a witness, I'm not showing my camera, I'm showing my screen. For a very simple reason. Because I wanted to, sh to see the evidence, otherwise who care about me, who I look like? That will not help you to prove your point. Then we continue. In, the, in, the, in here they said, every, uh, how to respect every life and not to kill anyone unless it's a pursuit of justice. Is that really what Islam teach? If you go in the Quran as an example, and I will go back to chapter 9, verse number 28. And there is many verses, but I'm just quoting one. In the Quran, we have a story. about a child who was killed for no reason except that the Muslim he fear uh, that uh, you know he will uh, do mis uh, mis mischievement uh, where is that hold on it's not showing here in the search all right we go to the story of al-khadr let us go here and this is story فَانْتَلَقَ حَتَّى إِذَا لَقِيَا غُلَامًا فَقَتَلَهُ قَالْ أَقَتَلْتَ نَفْسًا زَكِيَّةً بِغَيْرِ نَفْسًا Let us read together. What does that mean? Chapter 18, verse number 74. 
This is the story about a prophet of Islam. His name is Al-Khadr. And a prophet, his name is Moses. And this is the Moses of the Jews, supposedly. And Muhammad claimed that Allah, he sent Moses in a special training to learn from the prophet Al-Khadr. Al-Khadr is a prophet. He was called this way because he drank from the fountain of youth. And since then, he never died. He was exist in the time of Noah. He was exist in the time of Alexander the Great. He was exist in the time of Jesus. He was exist in the time of Muhammad. And he is exist today as we speak. Because simply he never died. For he is called Mr. Al-Khadr, which means Mr. Green. This guy, whenever he said, the grass turned green because he drank from the fountain of youth, which is the fountain Allah he provided to him. And it exists in Al-Bahrain. If you know Qatar, Al-Bahrain is a country next to it. So Moses here, he went in a trip. And supposedly he will meet Al Khadr in next to the fountain of the youth. And then he will go with him in a trip to learn from him because Allah he told him that there is I have a servant who is more higher than you in knowledge. And his name is Al Khadr. Moses he wanted to learn from him, so he went searching for him as Allah told him to do. Then Moses he met with him, and Moses asked him to walk with him to learn. And now the Khadr. He found a boy and he slay him. This is not a young man. This is a boy. You see, if you change the translator, you will see how the translation changed. Because Islamic translation is nothing but a scam. All right. When they met a lead, I mean, translation sometimes go really funny. All right. Here we go. Till they met a boy, as you said to you, it is a boy. Al Khadr and he, Al Khadr, he killed him. Musa said to him, You have killed an innocent person. Who killed no one? None. Remember, the Muslim, they say to you, in Islam, we are not allowed to kill non Muslims, or sorry, anyone, unless he is a criminal. You are right. Now, this boy, he killed none. So, what is his crime? Nothing. Except that one day this guy, his boy, he is going to grow up and he might leave Islam. So what we do? We kill him. So when the Muslims, they say that we kill only in the case of justice, to pursue justice, as you see here in the screen. Let me make this one bigger. Just in the case of justice, that is a big fat lie. That is a big fat lie. Here we go. The story is in front of us about a, a, a child who commit no crime, who killed no one. The only crime he have that they fear that when he grow up, he will not stay as a believer. So we need to kill him. Where is justice? If you go here with me and you read the interpretation of uh, the explanation of the Quran, here Allah explaining why this, the boy was, was uh, you know, uh, like slaughtered. And as for the boy, his parents were believers and we feared last, lest he should oppress them by being or being rebellion or, and disbelief. Okay. So we kill a child because you are feared in the future he will leave Islam. <laughs> so when the Muslim they say to you, there is a verse in the Quran saying, if a person killed as an innocent person, as if he killed all mankind, this is a big fat lie. That verse does not mean killing a person, which is totally anyone is forbidden. That verse is speaking about killing a person who is a protected by Allah, a person who is a Muslim. As you see here, a child, just because they fear that he will be rebellion in faith and disbelieve, he will not believe in Islam. We kill him. So when the Muslims speak about justice, they try to fool you. And right away, they will quote for you this verse, the one we mentioned to you. About killing an innocent person. It is nothing but a fabrication of the meaning. If we go here, 
<clears throat> Read carefully with me. This verse always Muslims they quote it for you. Chapter 5, verse number 32. They quote it everywhere. Obama himself he quoted it in his speech in Egypt because he is a deceiver Muslim. And on the account, we are denied to the children of uh, 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 Israel. So this was a command to Moses, not even to Muslims, that if anyone slow a person, unless it is for a murder or spreading mischievement in the land, it would be as if he slew the whole people. This is what they say to you, the, word, the Islam is against the murder of innocent person. But what they don't tell you, that Islam consider anyone is not a Muslim, is not innocent. <laughs> you see the deception? And I just give you the proof from the Quran itself. Chapter 18, verse number 74 and verse number 80, 82, read them, where the child he was slaughtered just because they feared he would leave Islam. And Muhammad in the Quran, he said, the one who changes religion, kill him. What is the justice? Do we kill? Do we kill a person who for changing his religion according to Islam? They say, uh, yeah. So how you say to me according to justice? What is justice? You claim that in Islam we kill only the one who commit a murder. So why you want to kill somebody just because he changed his religion? Because simply, this is a murder in Islam. It's a crime. It's the biggest crime ever. The one who changed the religion, kill him. If we go back to the stories of the Christians, because we were talking about chapter 9, verse number 28. If we go down, you can, you can read the whole chapter, uh, you know, uh, the whole interpretation. But read with me here. The Quran says, fight against those who believe not in Allah. Hold on. The Muslim they say to you, we kill only those who fight us. Okay. Did the Christians in Egypt fight the Muslims? No. Did the barbarian in Algeria and Morocco fight the Muslims? No. Did the people, the Assyrian in Iraq, they fought the Muslims? No. Never. But why you attack them then? Did the Spanish in Spain attack the Muslims? No. No. Muhammad, he sent the three letters during his lifetime, according to Muslims, saying, Islam, Taslam, convert to Islam, you will be safe, which means convert or die. Islam, Islam. Embrace Islam and you will be safe. As you see in the front of you. You know. Let me show you. Here we go. Aslam Taslam in the front of our eyes. Convert to Islam, you will be safe. Read with me carefully. This is the message supposedly Muhammad he sent a letter to the Byzantine ruler, the king of the the ruler, the, the ruler of of, uh, of the Roman in, in Jerusalem. And he said to him, Convert to Islam. I call you to Islam. If you become a Muslim, you will be safe. Do you see it? <laughs> who is the one attacking who? Who is the one sending a message to who? Did the king of the Romans say, send a message to Muhammad saying, convert to Christianity and you will be safe? It's Muhammad. The Roman never attacked Mecca. They never went all the way to Saudi Arabia. Never, never. They have no business there. They've never been there. In the whole history of Saudi Arabia, for a very simple reason, not because the Roman are... Uh, uh, not in you know like interested in occupying. We know the, the the Roman history of occupying more territories, but because this is a desert, there's nothing there. Their, their horses will die before they arrive. Muhammad is the one he's attacking them. He's sending letters, says convert or you die. 
You want to be safe? Safe from what? Safe from me. If you go in the Quran, in the Hadith, you will see Muhammad says, I've been ordered to fight all and to fight and kill. You see here the word qatilu, it's about fight to kill. All those hadith in front of us is speaking about that I've been ordered to fight and kill all mankind. Unless, unless what? Unless you do pray as I pray, unless you pay me the money, unless you slaughter as I slaughter, unless you eat as I eat, and then and only then you will be safe and I will not take your money. This is what Islam called justice. So when you hear a Muslim says, we don't, we should not kill anyone, innocent person, unless it is to pursue justice. This is justice in Islam. Fight against those, the people, all the people. Enter, enter what? Enter they stop fighting me, no. Until they became in peace with me, no. Until they agreed to sign a peace agreement, no. Until they testified that there's none worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. This is the whole story. He want to kill them. He want to fight them. He want to go in war with them for a very simple reason. He want them to be forced to accept him as a prophet. And then have to have to pray, not only to say the shahada, no. You have to establish the salah. And then you have to pay him the tax, the zakat. Muhammad, he want his pocket to be full of money. And if they do that, then they will have their protection from me of their, li their life and their property. So the property of you is going to be protected only if you are a person convert to Islam. And this is exactly what ISIS did. And this is exactly what the Muslims do all their life. As you see in the front of your eyes. So when somebody try to fool you and say to you, that we people, we are Muslims who don't fight anyone unless he fight us. That is a big fat lie. Now, if we continue here reading the, the, the book of Ibn Kathir, I'm going to jump a little bit so to, we can read the, the point of this chapter, chapter 9, verse 28. Until you fight them, until what? Until they pay the jizya. So Muhammad, the scam Muhammad, he don't care anymore about converting to Islam if you pay him money. Pay me, you stay alive. I don't care even if you believe in Allah or not. You see the scam? He is attacking the Christians, attacking us, and I am a Christian. I am from the Middle East. We've been attacked by the faith of Muhammad and his army for no reason, except we did not accept Islam. Not because we fought him. We never attacked him. We never attack anyone. The reason is simple. Allah, he commanded Muhammad. As Muhammad claimed, he been ordered to fight the people of the book, to fight them, to kill them, or they pay. So pay or die, or convert. And actually, in a certain point, when the Christians' villages they decide to convert to Islam just to stop paying the the, the, the jizya, which is a slavery tax, it is humiliation tax. The Muslim refuse because now they want if they convert to Islam, they will not pay jizya, and this is not good. So they, they refused them to convert to Islam. If you read with me here down, you will see. The Muslims, they, they lie to you, they say jizya is a tax. It's just tax like everybody. That's a false lie. It's a humiliation. It is a penalty with humiliation. Paying jizya is a sign of kufr and disgrace. It's not a tax. It's a sign of disgrace. Because how you pay it? You pay it would be you being humiliated, spitting in your face, torturing you, beating the hell of you, even taking your wife and your children if you do not pay. And then, Hatta Yu'atu Juzya entered the pay Juzya, and they, because they choose not to embrace Islam, do you see it? With the willing and submission, which means you have no choice, and defeat, and feel themselves subdued, disgraced, humiliated, etc. Read with me. And the Muslims are not allowed to honor the people of the Dhamma, which means the Muslims are not allowed to, to, to honor the Christian and the Jews. Elevate them above the Muslims. And for so, they, because they are miserable, disgraced, humiliated, Muslims recorded from Abu Hayra said, the Prophet said, if you meet the Jews and the Christians, don't initiate them with peace. And not only that, force them to walk in the sewage. In the old day, 
there was a sewage open in the side of the road. Simply, it's a tunnel for the dirty water to run. So if a Muslim walking by and you are coming from his direction or the opposite direction, you have to jump immediately in the sewage. Otherwise, the Muslim, he will punish you and maybe he even will kill you. There's a video on YouTube, you can search it. A Muslim, he was talking about the old days where Islam was flourishing. He said, in that time, all those Christians, they convert to Islam very fast for a very simple reason. He said, you know, imagine you, you have a son and you are talking with you, taking your son in the donkey in the city. But your father, he cannot face the street, which means he sit in the top of the donkey and his back is to the head of the donkey, which means he is facing the wrong direction. Why? Because a Christian is not allowed to do so. Imagine you ride the donkey in the wrong direction. Your son will say to you, Dad, why are you are sitting like this? The dad will say to him, because we are from the people of the Dimma. We are not allowed. Can you believe it? And they are proud about it. There's videos about it in YouTube. And he said, this is where we're able to make the majority of the Christians convert to Islam because we humiliated them. ISIS, they come to town and they start doing this to you, what you will do. Raping your daughter, spitting in your face, beating you, stealing your chicken, stealing your goat, taking your money, what you would do. You said to yourself, if you are not good in faith, if you are not strong with your faith, I say, okay, I will convert to Islam. If this will make me live like a human, I will. Many people, they don't, they don't just want to live. Did you ask yourself how Turkey became Muslims 90%? This is, was a Christian country, pure Christian country. This is not Turkey. There's nothing that's called Turkey. It's a lie. This is an empire of the Christians, totally demolished, and the Christian disappear. How? How that can happen in a few centuries? We will stop here. And I hope we cover enough details that all what the Muslims claim to be principle is nothing but a scam. Nothing there is a truthful, nothing there is real. It is a lie. And only foolish people, they will believe in such a garbage unless you use your brain and you start doing research. I advise you, my friend, to do search by yourself. Don't believe in what I said to you. As you see, I'm showing you what Muslim says this is Muslim books. This is Muslim interpretation. This is not my statement. None of the things I said to you today is coming from my books. By the way, you can read my books. And even my books have nothing of my own. All is Islamic reference. My books is a collection of reference. Like I say, like I try to explain to you uh, about the topic, but the major point of my books is reference and i'm so glad that many people they really love my books and more and more people they are uh, reading it but there is one thing i don't like about people reading my books they don't make a review you see if you look at the at, at, the, at the number of people who bought my books and then you read you see how many review you will be disappointed like why people don't make a review in case you do not know you can make a review on Amazon without using your real name. You can call yourself Amazon customer. In Amazon, they allow you to use a nickname, any name you wish, anything, or Amazon customer, or call yourself uh, Abdul, or anything you want. Still, you can make a review. All what we want, we want people to make an honest review. If the book is wonderful, say it's wonderful. If it's bad, say it's bad. But I wish people they would make more, 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 more review. And uh, I'm so glad that's... Uh, uh, the book, the my last book, Six and Allah, volume number one and volume number two, is really uh, like uh, 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 purchased highly by Muslims. A high number of Muslims are purchasing this book, and really they are shocked about what they learn about re their religion, things they never heard before. Right now, I'm working in additional book, which is going to be about the Apostle of Jesus and Islam. And I hope I will be able to finish it as soon as I can. Uh, but the purpose of those books 
is not just to write books. The purpose is to share knowledge and the knowledge live. You have a problem, and the problem is very simple. You don't speak Arabic. And because you don't speak Arabic, they lie to you. They fabricate translation. They fabricate stories. And there is no way for you to know unless you speak Arabic. All the Islamic translation, including the one we see in the front of us. If I show you the books of Ibn Kathir, which I have it in my home, all the collection of Ibn Kathir of Tafsir, and you compare between the English one, you will see that 90% of the English translation, it does not exist in the Arabic translation. And 90% of the Arabic text does not exist in the English translation, which means most of it is gone. It is totally disappeared. Because Muslims, when they translate, they don't really translate. They make a book to defend Islam. If you remember when I was debating with the Sheikh of Al-Azhar, Sheikh Ruhi, he said to me when I spoke about Tafsir, he said those Tafsir books is made to solve a problem. He's saying the truth. What is the problem? It's to defend Islam. Islam is stupid. So what we do, we make a Tafsir, and that, that is supposed they will defend Islam. But as you see, those became priceless texts for us to prove our point today in the time of deception where everybody don't nobody want to say the king is naked you know the story of the king the naked king where the tailor he told him only foolish ones they will see you naked then a child he said the king is naked the king is naked we are in this time everybody is a hypocrite everybody is a liar everybody is politically correct and nobody want to say that muhammad is a scumbag nobody want to say that muhammad is a criminal nobody want to say that islam is anti-human cult this religion it's not a religion it's, it's a cult should be forbidden this is more fascist from hitler this is more nazis from mussolini this is the most ugly disgusting cult ever you can imagine and yet they try to force it on your children as we see in netherlands where they take a children's from school to show them how to pray to allah because people are stupid and people are mute and deaf under the political correction and under the liberals tv stations we are living in a time where doing right is wrong and doing wrong is right. We are in a time that people cannot find a bathroom for them, where a man, he can go to, 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 to piss with the children. Why? Because uh, what if a man, he would like to be a girl? So they are confused about gender. They are confused about the identity. They don't want to have even their flag. Imagine a child will be kicked out of his school because he's carrying American American flag. I mean, have you ever heard of a stupidity like this? We are living under the liberal influence of media, which is nothing but disgusting and stupidity. And today's stupidity is education. People watch opera, but they don't listen to me. I spend my life reading, studying, and then you will find somebody saying to you that Allah is, is God and Akbar is mean and great. And that's it. Supposedly, this guy is going to educate you. And then we find someone like John McCain saying to you that Allahu Akbar does not mean uh, uh, jihad it does not mean anything uh, because it says Allah is a great it's very simple you know don't you say the Lord is a great in Christianity and then you find an Obama quoting for you the Quran misleading you saying to you Islam is peace same as George Bush same all the scam backs around you same as the the the, the, the president of France and the, all 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 I mean scam is all over and nobody want to say the truth so how your son will know the truth This is why our videos are very important. Please download them, share them. I don't care how many people subscribe to my channel. I have many channels. I have people who download my videos and they have a lot more subscribers from what I will have in the coming 10 years. Good for you. What I care for is sharing the truth. Download my videos, cut them pieces, share them with your friends, watch them, explain to your children. Let your children learn. Don't, don't hide the truth from them because your child tomorrow will go to school and you will find a Muslim he when he will lie to him the Muslim himself he been lied to and your child have no education adult these days have no education people don't even read books these days people watch movies they get their source about Jesus from a movie it's called the passion of Christ that's it they get their their source about Islam from a uh, from a, from a movie it's called a risala made by al-Qazafi 
nobody want to learn and nobody want to read and nobody want to search and they go by the lies of the liberals where Islam mean peace Islam is religion like everybody and Muslims are peaceful people what a scam and I'm not talking about against the Muslims by the way I'm talking against the religion a Muslim person at the end of the day he is a believer in Islam if Islam teaching terrorism then how you want to tell me a Muslim he teach peace or he believe in peace don't he believe in what Muhammad said well this is what Muhammad said I've been ordered to kill all mankind can you find me one Muslim condemn what Muhammad he said can you find me one Muslim says this is against Islam can you find me one Muslim says I reject this no but they are the followers of Muhammad. I've been commanded to fight the people until all of them convert to Islam. So you are telling me that Muhammad was a terrorist and his followers are nice people. And his followers don't believe in war. And his followers don't do what Muhammad do. Even Muhammad, he said, I've been victorious by terror. Nusr to Barrab. He was victorious by what? By terror. In the front of your eyes. Muhammad is the first terrorist and you are saying to me that Muslims don't believe in terrorism so the Prophet is a terrorist and he said that and he announced it and yet those who follow him don't believe in terrorism you are right and every day there's an attack somewhere they say to you he have a mental issue two days ago attack in Toronto the day the same day attack in Germany the day before attacking today as we speak more than 150 people killed in the south of Syria from the Druze. Why they are killed? Because they are Druze. The Muslim Sunni believe that the Druze are not Muslims. They attack them in the mall, they attack them in the, the, the grocery stores, in the vegetable stores, and they start shooting everybody. And so, aside bombers everywhere, and they killed a huge number of them. That is Islam. But nobody want to see it. And nobody want to say it but we are here to do so please help us and i appreciate those who like to help us by uh, uh, you know by ordering my books by making donation we appreciate that and may the lord bless you for listening and being with us and until i see you again in the coming broadcast where i will announce about it when it's going to be may the lord bless you all and keep you in good health and wealth christ is lord and islam is false i mean to that See you soon again. Bye-bye.